Okay, and I'll kick it off to my uh, NARA colleagues. Thanks, Matt. Um, hello, uh, I'm John Martinez. Uh, I'm supervisor of the Records Management Policy and Standards team at NARA. And with me today um, to talk a little about the, the digitization regulations are um, two other members of our team, um, Ann Mason and Kevin Divorcey. They're also senior electronic records management policy analysts um, on the records management policy and standards team. Um, our program works within the larger records management and outreach program, and that is within the office of the chief, chief records officer for the U.S. government at NARA. Um, and the, the overall mission of the, the office of the chief records officer is um, to lead federal records management by providing guidance, training, oversight, appraisal, and assistance to promote the effective management of federal records as business assets. So the piece of that mission that we're obviously here to talk about today um, is are the digitization regulations that our office um, authored and have published. Uh, could you go to the next slide, Matt? And by way of introduction, this is just sort of an overview of the, the things we wanted to try and cover today. Um, in preparing for this presentation, you know, we, we asked, what do we think vendors should be aware of? What do they need to know for this? Um, so we're gonna give you some quick background on the regs. Um, we're gonna focus, try and focus on the content, some specific resources we've developed in addition to the regs. For eight, you know, main audiences, agencies, but also for anyone else, it's right whoever's doing the digitization, obviously. Um, and key areas that we've been addressing with agencies, and like I said, by extension, we think anyone potentially doing digital, digitization work should be aware of. Um, just a note: you'll see often on these slides, we've we've done a lot of these presentations mainly for probably almost exclusively for agencies at this point. We reuse some, reuse some content where you may see the word agency as an actor. What it means there is, in the context here, is whoever is doing the digitization. The regs themselves are agnostic about who does who who is actually doing the work. Um, so as I say, this will be, <clears throat> and Kevin and I are going to take turns addressing uh, different areas. Um, this will be fairly high level. We do have time at the end for the Q and A, as Matt said. Um, so I just ask if you could hang on to questions until we get to the end. I think it'll be the most effective. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Anne to start us off. Uh, Anne? Great. Thanks, John. Uh, next, there we go. Uh, so we created the webpage you see here to consolidate the digitization resources into one place. Um, all of the products that we're talking about today are posted on this webpage. And as NARA develops any future products, they will be posted here. Uh, so now that we're gonna talk a little bit about the regulations themselves. So next slide, please. So as Matt noted, there are different requirements for temporary versus permanent records. So it is critical to know how records are scheduled before the start of any digitization project so that the records can be digitized appropriately. Um, so the regulations for temporary records contained in subpart D specify high-level requirements for digitization, such as ensuring that the digitized versions are complete and are of sufficient quality to be a replacement for the source records. Um, agencies must also validate that the requirements and the regulations have been met. And next slide, please. So subpart E lays out the requirements for permanent reflective records, such as paper and photographic prints. Uh, we are currently working on regulations for transmissive materials, and hope to have those out as soon as possible. Um, so subpart E lays out a detailed set of technical specifications and records management requirements, as you can see by all the sections in the regulation on this slide when compared to subpart D. Uh, similar to subpart D, agencies must validate that the digitized versions meet the requirements laid out in the regulation and are of sufficient quality to replace the source records. There are some things that are not addressed by the regulation uh, for example, NARA does not require OCR, uh, but agencies are free to do OCR if it meets their business needs and write that into their contracts um, if they want it done by the vendors. Um, also, NARA does not address requirements that are covered in other laws and regulations, such as 508 compliance or handling of sensitive information, as that is out of scope for these digitization regulations. And next slide, please. And I want to briefly address the differences between FAGI versus the regulations. Um, FAGI, if you're not familiar, stands for the 
Federal Agency Digitization Guidelines Initiative. Um, this is a committee that has done some great work on creating guidance. Um, FAGI Three Star has kind of become a marketing shorthand, but FAGI is uh, not the same as the regulations. Um, specifically, there are file format, compression, metadata, and records management requirements in the regulation that differ from FAGI. Um, FAGI is a guidance document, so it's non-binding. Although FAGI is based on the um, ISO 19264 standard for imaging systems quality analysis. And FAGI outlines aim points and tolerances as applied to different records material types into four different image quality metrics and expressed in one star to four star, four star being the, the, the highest. Um, NARA has adopted the quality metrics and digital image conformance evaluation method outlined in FAGI. Um, NARA also coordinated with the FAGI committee to create a new category for modern textual records, which is based on the unbound general collection specifications that already existed, um, but it's slightly relaxed. Um, this is because modern textual records are generally have clear text on white office paper. They're easier to digitize. These records are often appropriate for mass digitization using auto feed scanners as they usually do not require special handling that fragile or other special materials may need. So kind of bottom line, it's the requirements and the regulations that federal agencies must follow. Um, however, the FAGI guidelines do contain some background information and best practices that you may find useful, um, particularly as you encounter challenging materials. And I'm gonna pass it back over to John. Thanks, Anne. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple things next. Um, quality management and one of the um, guidance products, supporting products we have put out, um, again, found on that digitization webpage, which, which Anne showed at the beginning, where all these, these supplementary products, uh, along with other things, can be found. Um, quality management, which is sort of a theme throughout the throughout the, the regulation and how it leads up to another aspect, the end aspect of, of all of this, which is ver the verification um, and validation that the agency agency does at, as at the end of all of this, which is going to allow them to transfer those, those digitized records to NARA. So like I said, one of the products and concepts um, that we wanted to highlight is quality management and the quality management guide. Um, the guide was written uh, to help agencies learn about the various aspects of quality management and digitization, including quality assurance, quality control, as well as the role of objective testing and automation and optimizing quality control and inspection processes. Um, and uh, obviously this is, to, uh, I think I said it, this is to support the, the, the regs specifically for permanent records. Um, the goal of quality management in a digitization project is to present defects before they happen. Now, prevention of defects is the most efficient, cost-effective, and productive activity in a digitization workflow. Um, you know, we, we talk about how digitization is an image manufacturing process that relies upon quality assurance, or QA, to establish specifications and requirements, and a quality control, a QC process, to test for and inspect uh, any defects. So NARA's regulations, uh, digitization regulations, could be considered a, a total quality management document that brings together um, records management practices, uh, digital imaging quality standards, quality control, inspection, and validation steps. Each phase of a, a digitization project will affect the other parts. For example, the, the establishment of intellectual and physical control contributes to creating metadata as well as identifying missing records. And the quality control and inspection steps have been optimized to rely on automated processes where possible and to limit human inspection on the phases that cannot be automated. So again, by relying on, on objective testing and analysis for image quality, you know, we, we aim to eliminate wasteful subjective um, inspection of attributes. So I'm gonna bridge now to the validation phase. This all leads up to, to agency validation. Um, the, the validation phase is, is a high level review to verify that all of the requirements of a project have been met and the digital surrogates can serve the same legal and evidentiary purposes as the source records, as the original paper records. 
Go next slide, please. So um, this is what I, I mentioned earlier, the sort of the, this phase of verification and validation it, and it describes, you see the definitions here of describing what each one is. Um, this is the, this is a process that's expected that we we that it's going to the agency will take once records have been digitized. Um, it's to ensure that digitized records meet all quality meet all image quality metadata and records management requirements. It's a separate step from the quality management, and it's to ensure that the digitized records are complete and accurate and can meet the same business purpose as originals. As I said. Um, this is gonna rely uh, on the documentation as well as the, 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 the digitized images, obviously, that, that have been produced throughout the digitization process. Next slide, please. And just a little more on validation, and that's the within the regs 3656, um, it, it points back to the section that discusses it um, in the regulations themselves. And again, you know, this is the phase where the agency responsibility um, is to verify, you know, that everything's been digitized, um, metadata is accurate, technical attributes have been met, image files are legible, um, you know, if there's any mixed media that's been addressed appropriately, and as I said, importantly, that the, all the project documentation has been created. That's key to doing any of this. Below that, there's a mention there what NARA does not do at this phase, because we get this question a lot. Understandably, we have this question a lot, but um, the documentation, NARA is not review or the agency validation is a step they take before they transfer. Um, they are not submitting to NARA or NARA is not doing a sort of a countersigning or a certification of their validation. Um, with with these digit with the digitized records, the act of, of transferring them, that you know, that they have a that they are affirming that they have validated, they've done the process and validated that these are acceptable. And likewise, we get a question a lot, understandably, about what happens to the documentation. Does that have to be turned over as part of a transfer? And again, the answer is no. Um, it has to be retained, certainly throughout the, the digitization process, um, really until the digitized versions have been accessioned into NARA's holdings. Uh, after that, there's there's allowance for the agency to, the, the, they have authority for dis for disposal of the the documentation after that. The only there is one scenario um, where NARA may uh, ask to look at it, and that would be there is another part of the office of the chief records officer that does oversight. They do agency inspections of the records management program. They do a few a year, and they may, as part of that inspection, if there is ongoing digitization uh, at an agency, they may ask to see the documentation at that as part of that as part of that process at that point. So there, like I say, it's not requested, it's not required to be transferred to NARA. It may be the, the only touch point with, with, with our office may be if one of those inspections is being done with an agency. Next slide, please. And I'll try and do this quickly because this is what we talked about. This is, there is something called the exceptions process. This is 180 from what we're talking about here. This is about records that are not that an agency has is not going to digitize and that are going to stay analog and be transferred to NARA that way. It's not a process that should ever touch you, but we thought just so you have a holistic view of what agents of of the memoranda that that the memoranda and what they cover that that address digitization. They also address this exception process. Mostly, this, this is just an FYI, so you have a holistic picture of what the, what agencies are dealing with. Um, and like I say, there is a process that where agencies, if agencies identify records that they want to make a case, and that's the process. They have to submit an exception request where they uh, ask NARA, they make a case to NARA requesting that they not have to digitize records for rationale, like you see here, burdens from the public, cost would exceed benefit. They can't be, the paper can't be replaced for some other reason. There's a whole process about how NARA um, processes those, does an analysis, gives them the response. Um, and like I say, purely FYI, the bullet, there's a bulletin 2020-01 that specifically talks about this, um, if you just want to be aware of what that is. But like I say, this is the opposite of what we're talking about here. This is about records that are not being digitized. Okay, so um, I'm going to pass it to Kevin now. He's going to talk about another one of the main 
main main uh, uh, supporting pieces of guidance we put out, which is the success criteria. Kevin, great, thank you, John. Um, so you know, as Anne and John have made clear, um, there's some complexity uh, to the digitization regulation, and we recognize that it represents a pretty big change from previous document conversion. Um, you know, digitizing as a records management process where the digital files are going to serve the same business purposes as the paper or analog source records, which will then be destroyed. That, that's kind of a big change. And so one of the additional products that we've put together is this success criteria white paper. And it follows on two previous uh, success criteria documents that we've done, one for email management and another for general electronic records management. And you can see here some of the goals of doing this. Um, if any of you have read through the Code of Federal Regulation and looked at the digitization regs, you'll recognize um, that they tend to be pretty dry statements of requirements of what must be done. Unlike the FAGI document, they don't tell you why and they don't give you hints as to how. And so uh, some of this additional um, documentation that we've released are to support agencies and make it more clear why some of those requirements exist. And then also in plain English, explain how to achieve some of them. You know, we use the terms, you know, this is what success looks like in these areas. Um, you can see at the, the bottom bullet point, we've organized uh, the records management processes of digitization around these four you know, buckets, policies, access, systems, and disposition. And if we could go to the next slide, I'll, I'll kind of walk through those in terms of this document. And here you can see this kind of jigsaw puzzle of the interrelatedness of these things. And we try and make it clear that all of these are equally important and they should all inform one another when it comes to digitization of permanent records. Um, you know, if you have access restrictions in place, then your systems need to be able to support those. You need to have policies that lay out uh, how the process is going to work. Disposition is critically important. Um, as Anne mentioned, there's a different regulation if you're digitizing temporary records from permanent records. Um, once you've digitized and validated, you need to understand where your disposition authority is coming from, whether it's through uh, GRS 4.5, the general record schedule or not. So all of these things are really important and this document uh, lays them out. And again, you know, we aimed it primarily at agencies recognizing that records officers may not be technical experts when it comes to digitization, but it's probably also useful for vendors to look at. So they have an understanding, as John said, of this kind of holistic view of our requirements and can identify where you might fit in and what things are beyond the scope of your abilities uh, so that in crafting contracts, you're really uh, identifying what can help agencies. So let's go to the next slide. So, you know, we, I, I mentioned we lay out in plain language what success looks like. And so for policies, the kind of things that we're looking for are, you know, has an agency right clearly identified roles and responsibilities. Um, one of the things where we differ from FAGI is, you know, maintaining and establishing, uh, well, establishing and maintaining intellectual and physical control of the records. You know, knowing what it is you're gonna digitize is important. A scanning technician can only assert that they have digitized what was presented to them. They're gonna have no knowledge of boxes that may be in another location because they were pulled for a FOIA request. So having that kind of control and knowing that the complete body of records has been digitized is really important. And who, whose job is that? Is that the, the vendors or the agency or who in the agency? Um, making sure that the procedures for handling source records are clearly identified. Um, if there are staples, paper clips, they're in folders, is that work going to be done by the agency prior to digitization or is that going to be part of the contract? 
Um, the digitization of the source records uh, is laid out. And as Ann mentioned, you know, we build upon FAGI and the FAGI requirements are in there, but there's all this other records management uh, requirements that are wrapped around it. Um, but you need to have those policies in place that dictate how the digitization is going to be um, carried out, quality management. And then ultimately, the management of the digital records that are created, um, because those are going to be the permanent records. Um, you can't just park them on a hard drive and put it on a shelf. The, those need to be accessible, and uh, you need to be able to respond to FOIA requests in the future. Um, the validation, as we mentioned, we leave that up to agencies to determine who's going to carry that out. And so there really should be a policy in place saying whose responsibility is that. Um, the disposition, again, uh, making sure that process of once validated, who's going to make the call to uh, destroy the source records, all of that needs to be laid out in policies. So let's go to the, the next slide. And systems. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about a complex uh, records management process. And as I mentioned, you know, having intellectual and physical control, tough to do if you don't have databases in place uh, managing your source records. Um, you have to have systems in place that are capable of meeting the technical requirements laid out in the regulation. And that, that relates to the, the FAGI uh, three-star process of verifying that your equipment is actually capable of um, meeting those requirements. And then, as I mentioned, what systems do you have in place once you've digitized those records and they have become the permanent record so that you can use them in your business processes? Um, so let's go to the next slide. And access, uh, you know, one of NARA's uh, in our strategic goal is make access happen. And so uh, accessibility of these records throughout the process is critically important. And so we explain, you know, what does success look like for that? Um, you know, ultimately the records, both the digital and the analog or paper originals need to be usable and retrievable. Um, and that's one thing we stress. Until they're validated, you can't destroy them. So you need to make sure that the equipment that you use isn't a one-shot deal where uh, if an image didn't come through, the paper's no longer readable. Um, and so that's the kind of back and forth that we hope agencies will have to make sure that uh, the process is um, not a destructive process. Uh, Intellectual and physical control, you know, knowing where in the process records are in, in case a FOIA request comes in. Do you, do you know which boxes are sitting in the scanning center? Do you know which ones have been validated if it's kind of a rolling process? Um, and then ultimately, uh, you know, are you going to retain the source records uh, at the end of the process? Agencies have that option, but they're still required to do e-discovery on them. And so, you know, destroying the originals might simplify that. But do you have a plan? Are you going to be able to access those and serve up to the public digitized records until they're transferred to the National Archives? So let's go to the next slide. And disposition. Uh, you know, I think we've kind of driven home the point that the, the disposition of the records is very important in understanding which regulation are you going to use? Are, are the records in question permanent or are they uh, temporary? Uh, in one case, you'll use subpart D and the other subpart E, which is a uh, much more complex regulation. And understanding um, where in the process things are, you know, if part of the contract was to dispose of source records at the end, knowing <laughs> clearly that uh, validation has occurred and having that communication with the agency to know which source records can be destroyed is very important. And so we lay out, you know, what, what does success look like when it comes to the disposition of both the analog and paper source records, and then also the digital uh, records that are produced through digitization. So let's go to the next slide. And I believe that's it and we can open things up for questions. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording.